Hi, my name is Patty Jenkins, and one thing you might not know about me is that I love to speed skate. When I made the film Monster, I became acquainted with the prison system. I became educated in how incredibly difficult it can be for people to get out of prison, even when they're innocent. And part of what I learned was that once a prisoner, the world often brands people a prisoner forever. In the course of working on that film, I met an incredible guy named Scott Budnick, who was really doing unbelievable things to correct the prison system in the state of California and start the ARC Foundation. ARC stands for the Anti-Recidivism Coalition, and what they do is they help youths who are paroling to have an actual chance to get out of a life that might get them back in prison by educating them, by giving them tools, by giving them support. Everybody wants to be a hero. Very few people are born wanting to be a, a lifelong prisoner, but if they're given a path out, everybody wants to be the hero in this story. And so it's incredible to watch that shift in people's eyes who didn't see a path out once they find one. I don't have one favorite memory from making Wonder Woman, but I have a whole lot of favorite memories. Shooting the scenes that were so enjoyable, that's always a great moment when you're like, wow, this is coming to life. This is working right before my eyes. But then there's also all of the moments that are just absolutely hilariously wrong, like me in a giant snowsuit out in the freezing cold of winter talking to Gal in a Wonder Woman suit. And, you know, these very, very funny moments that happen in the absurd, you know, process of making these films. Three words to describe the Wonder Woman sequel. Fun, big, and hopefully powerful. I think the secret behind Gal Gadot and Chris Pine's chemistry is that it's real. They both entertain each other and delight each other so much. They both are very comfortable in the space of giving each other a hard time and joking with each other. And I think that that dynamic is harkens back to kind of a classic on-screen couple who is not fighting like this, which you often see where, you know, that's kind of you're waiting for them to come together, but it's just kind of having a lovely good time giving each other a hard time as they're also falling in love and getting to know each other. And really, we had the same laughter and joy when we were shooting and when we weren't. Seeing the young girls dressed up in costume is and was one of the most powerful things about making this film because recently these superhero films have had very adult audiences, but I was very conscientious about the fact that little girls were going to want to see it and wanting them to be able to see it, but I never expected it to kind of catch on to the extent that it did. And so genuinely watching this next generation not only embrace a character that I love, but embrace the message that she stands for into their soul is so incredible. Knowing that we might have, have touched them and the way they think about the world is pretty stunning. I really didn't start to make the connection about the lightning rod it was going to hit of a conversation that wanted to be had until it opened. For whatever reason, I was just, I knew that I was speaking about something that felt pertinent to me in this period of time. I assumed that it would be seen just as a superhero film. I wasn't even thinking about the fact that me being a woman and a female director and Gal being a female lead was going to be as much of the conversation as it was. I think it wasn't until it opened and I saw the conversation and I saw the reaction and I saw the kind of support we were getting by audiences that had gone before and what that meant in the media even. It was sort of incredible. I feel like we're standing in this crossroads of a conversation that wants to happen. And the conversations that people want to have. They want to talk about all kinds of things as it relates to equality, to women, to female power, female leadership, their ability to be successful without being defined by men. I mean, all kinds of things.
for Hillary Clinton to be talking about us at all is so crazy. That's where you're making a movie and then suddenly you're like, the world that I watch on television is talking back to us. I'm very, very honored to be being talked about in that way, really. The best advice I ever received was in the very beginning when I trained to be a camera person and the person that trained me said, it's relentlessly difficult and everyone around you will never understand, but if you love it, then you have to embrace the fact that it's a completely different lifestyle than you're used to and just go forward with that understanding. I actually was not upset at all. <laughs> it was, everybody's entitled to their own opinion, but if we're going to debate something in a public way, then it has to be replied to. I didn't agree, you know, it was what it was, but if he had said it in a room, you know, at a dinner table, c'est la vie. But if it's gonna be talked about in public, then obviously I have to reply that I think that's incorrect. Dunkirk, I loved it. It was like a cinematic roller coaster ride where I went through this incredible journey with all sight and sound that culminated into something that was an incredible film to me. I don't know what it is that holds the industry back from having more female directors. I think that there's obviously some little belief systems for the success of our film to make headlines the way that it did. Yes, it's a first, but also for it to be something that so needs to be addressed, that they would need to point out that a female-led tentpole could make money. It's answering an assumption that they couldn't. That's gotta be it. When you believed that the young male audience was the audience to get to, I think there was a challenge to believe that for some reason a woman could do it. Now, it's not even the young male audience that's the lead audience, in fact, because of piracy. So I think that a change in the understanding of who you're trying to get to audiences with will help, but obviously there's more than that. I don't know what it is. When it comes to how you balance your personal life or your, particularly your family and your work, I mean, it sort of doesn't bother me because it seems like a very pertinent question. I think they should be asking everyone that, particularly when I see the men on my crews really struggling because they are very active participants in raising their children and they're trying to make it to their kids' events and trying to see them every night and trying to do those things. I think that you try to do your best on all sides. I'm passionate about what I do and I believe in it. My son understands that, my husband understands that, and I'm lucky to have a very supportive family, but I try to give the best I can every moment I can that I'm not working. I love Superman and Superman really touched my life when I was a kid and the movie of Superman came out and it rocked my world. It made me laugh and it made me cry and it made me Superman. And so I think that that's what inspired me to start making these films in the first place. So he remains to this day a favorite. Absolutely, <laughs> who wouldn't want to direct Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman? <laughs>